Hello, and welcome to another edition of Lying on the Beach on Camera. I'm Steve Greenberg with... Lois Whitman Hess. And we're here talking about whatever is interesting. At the moment, what's interesting is, of course, we're in this pandemic. We're in the age of corona. And Lois brought up something interesting to me a, a few days ago. She mentioned that, what are people doing about extramarital affairs? They're stuck in their house with their spouse. How are they able to have those activities and still continue with a happy, healthy life? I, I put that in the back of my mind, didn't think about it again. And then I went to Merrick Park to a couple of stores are open. I went to Crate and Barrel and on the way out, I see this man in his fifties with a woman in her early thirties, late twenties. And they are mouth to mouth, making out big time on the bench at Merrick Park. And I immediately thought, that Lois is onto something. This guy's married to somebody else. That's his girlfriend. And that's the only place they can meet. So we thought we would talk about that. And we have a special guest, Mr. X. You see him down there. We'll talk about him in a minute. But, but Lois, is this a real problem, you think? This is definitely a real problem. Because in my public relations career, a lot of times I was just hired because I would listen to the person who was having an affair. It's a, it's a really upsetting, <laughs> it's amazing that this took place and I don't want anyone to think less of me, but it just presented itself. Over the years, I, you know, I've had hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of clients and most of them are men and a good percentage of them were seeing other women while being married. They could have been married several years, they could have been married 40 years. And I was a great New York gal kind of like, you know, yak, 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 that uh, they could confide in. And they would call me up or I would go to their office and I would listen to this nonsense and then get my retainer check and go home. <laughs> Not quite like that. It came in the mail and everything. But the truth is that, you know, I don't know, maybe 30% of people today uh, do have another relationship that their significant other or their spouse don't know about. So while I heard people saying, oh my God, the only thing I really want during this, you know, virus pandemic is to really hug my grandkid. And I'm thinking, uh-uh, that's not the main thing that a lot of people that have a secret life um, are thinking about. They have real problems going on because I'm hearing from people all the day, their, their girlfriends or their boyfriends and some of them are same sex relationships are threatening that if they don't see them, they are gonna tell their significant other or their spouses. So there's a lot of crisis going on. So not only do they have all the problems that we have today, but there is major conflict and major trouble going on. And some of them really have consulted lawyers, psychiatrists, PR people like myself, close friends, family members, but it's a real problem and nobody is talking about that. How are people dealing with this? And, and, I, could t and I, could, I just want to tell you quickly, I have friends that have rented other apartments or asked for apartments you know, from um, a, a friend or, uh, or, 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 or couch surfing, whatever they have to do to see that girlfriend or boyfriend. And they tell their, their significant others or their spouses, that they're going, they have a back problem and they're seeing a, a, a chiropractor or they have a dental emergency or they're seeing a psychiatrist or they have to run to the, oh, I got one guy that runs to the, he, I'm sure he's listening in, he's so worried that I'm gonna mention his name. No names, I'll go to my grave with this information. He goes to the office, he tells his, I, I, whatever it is, he tells whoever it is, that he can only go at night because that's when no one is around and there's no chance of getting the virus because he can't catch anything and he goes in at night. Lois, yeah, we, we have to get okay. to our special guest too. We have to get to our special guest. Okay. okay. So I just, wanted, I just wanted to paint the scenario of what's going on in, in life where this is like a whole other agenda than the average person knows from. It's, all right, Steve, now I'm gonna be quiet. Uh, so while we have that, we have an extra special guest here. We're calling him Mr. X, but he's actually living the life that Lois just described. So this is not just 
Uh, and and what, basically what I saw in Merrick Park is very real. Those park benches, those two, that couple was, I'm sure Lois had nailed the situation there. So uh, Mr. X, thank you very much for joining us here. Tell me uh, your situation and how are you coping? Let's hear all, let's hear all about it. Hi, Steve. Um... I can't, I'm sorry, I can't really talk that loud. My wife and my kids are in the um, garage there painting birdhouses. We, uh, we've been putting up a lot of birdhouses since the uh, quarantine started and uh, I'm in the bedroom and they're out there. So um, if they bust in, if my wife comes in during this uh, podcast, I'm gonna have to hang up, I'm sorry, but... Um, my story is... Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. And it wasn't easy to get you, trust me. Absolutely. We're so glad you're, you're able to talk to us, even for a short time. So tell yeah. us your situation and how are you coping? Steve, your voice, your volume is going down. Uh-oh, okay. Go on. Just go on. Um, well, I, uh, I work at a software company in Fort Lauderdale. I live in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, what happened was... Uh, before the pandemic started, I had a flirtation going with a uh, a woman at my work, a software developer, and she, uh, one thing led to another, and one night uh, we went out for a few drinks to celebrate a new uh, account that we got, and uh, we ended up in bed together, and I have to say the sex was just some of the best sex I ever had in my life. I, I'm I'm not a serial cheater. I'm not someone who does this all the time. It was a complete surprise and it happened when we were drunk and I thought that was gonna be the end of it. And then we just couldn't keep away from each other. We, we... And the pandemic, how is, you know, here we are now we're at stay at home. So how are you coping with? Well, I thought that when the quarantine started that would be the end of it. But what happened for me was the more the longer I was uh, in quarantine with my wife and kids, the, I don't want to use the word, the hornier I got. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to say that. Um, That's usually the case. That's usually the case. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I swear to God, I went crazy. All I wanted to do was see this woman. And, and basically she was the same way at her, her place. So she has a husband, she has two kids as well. And, um, I um I I I go running at the Sky Park up in uh Fort Lauderdale where they have a uh it's an airport a private airport and uh I run around there and so I can get out of the house and do that but uh I'm also in charge of taking care of my wife's parents condo they live in Connecticut and uh they're up there and uh I'm in charge of changing the air filters and checking the plumbing. And so I'm really ashamed to say that's where I take, I take my, uh, my mistress. So you've been changing air filters often and checking the plumbing pretty often, it sounds like. Well, my wife doesn't know I'm going over there. She thinks I'm going running. So, uh, uh, but I'm actually taking this woman to her uh, parents condominium and uh sneaking her in there because uh you know i don't want anyone at the condo to see us either because they know some of them know my wife uh but uh i you know i i have to end this thing because it's getting just too too much i, I i'm just but mr I just, x mr x that was the question i was going to ask you because i don't want anyone to get off of this um interview and think based on what I said and what Steve saw that we are condoning this. We just want to bring this up, you know, as a topic that people have not been paying attention to because I'm sure it's hitting 20 to 30% of the population. How difficult is this for you? Is this a happy time or it's is this a happy. stressful time? It's not happy, it's stressful. I, I, I just don't understand it because the, the, the longer the pandemic lasts, the hornier that I get, and the more that I want to have sex with this other woman. And she says- is it, is it just about sex? Or, I mean, there's nothing else going on. You don't like her. You know, you have similar interests. I, I do like her, but we don't talk about our interests. It's more about just being in that private bubble 
away from all of it, away from the pandemic, away from the news, away from my, my, my family's anxiety. We, we, we get to the condo and it's like we are in our own little world and it's safe. Somehow we're safe together. And I don't even know if she's, I don't know if she's safe. I, I, I assume she is, but that's the worst part of it is that I think I have nightmares that I'm going to bring back the virus to my family. That was exactly now, what I was going to say. He just nailed it. You just nailed it. Right. It used to be you worried about bringing a sexually transmitted disease back to a partner. Now you have to worry about bringing a, uh, a deadly virus back in the form of COVID. So quite frankly, quite frankly, uh, quite frankly, I'm worried about both. Mm -hmm. What if she starts to threaten you when you start to try to break it off? Well, maybe you'll never break it off. You know what? I haven't even broached the subject yet because um, it's so intense when we get to this condominium. You know, I take her into the bedroom and and it's just it's our it, we're we're in heaven for for a half hour, forty five minutes. I can't go any longer than forty five minutes because I still have to go out for a run. You know, I I have to show up back at home sweaty and not just from the sex. I got to be sweaty from a run. So. It's, I mean, how careful are you? I mean, a neighbor could see you coming in with a woman and report back to your in-laws. I mean, this really may be. I send her out. I send her out first and she goes as quickly as she can to the elevator. And then I leave five minutes later. Oh, my God. Oh my God. I have so many friends in that situation and clients as well. It's really people think it's very romantic. They think it's very enchanting. It's not. I've lived this life with other people, and it's really a lot of drama. And the res and the net net. I'm just warning you. The net net could, um, uh, you know. I know you don't really have to tell me. You don't have to tell me that. I know that. I live. I live in fear of it every day. But I have to tell you that 45 minutes that we have alone in the bedroom is worth it. And you, that's you, just the bottom line. And I think also. You mentioned about horniness, but you know, anxiety increases that as well. So the anxiety of our time, I think, ups the ante. So you're, if we're all more anxious, we're also more horny as well. So I think that might be adding to your problem, as you know. You it's just this, this, this woman does some things that no woman has ever done with me before, and it's just too exciting for me to give up right now. I do need to give it up. I will give it up. I just can't do it right now. I'll give it up. I'm thinking maybe in two months. Okay, two months. Well, we're going <laughs> to take that with you and see if that I, I, I really think you better think about it. In two months, she's going to be calling uh, your wife. She, she can't call my wife. If she calls my wife, my life will be over. I mean, I'm telling you, my life will be over. My goodness. Well, I have to tell you, from my experience, sometimes when that has happened over the last 43 years that I've been working at my agency, some of the marriages got better. It's a, it's a very strange phenomenon. You know, there was a big burst and then people got back. So, but yeah. I think what you did was nail it. I think what you said is really the, the, the whole crux of people having extramarital affairs because it is an escape from responsibilities of everyday life. And yeah. now it's amplified with the virus. So when you're there, you're living in fantasy world and whatever the results are for that 45 minutes, you have relief like none of us have. You're right, I do. I have, a, I have the most tremendous sense of relief three or four times a week that just keeps me grounded, you know? It keeps me grounded so that I can be there for my kids and my wife and be there for them throughout the day and let you know help them build these bird houses <laughs> I wonder. That, that sounds like a great excuse you could say but what about the bird <laughs> but you know i have to say it's amazing to me the, the, the number of people that might be in your situation i we don't i don't have any statistics i don't think anyone's done any homework on it but when you just the fact that i bumped into seeing that little scene at merrick park tells me that there's a lot of that happening any place two people can get together are getting together because of this whole stay at home situation. So I, I'm, I'm not the least bit surprised. I'm so, I'm really honored that you were able to share this with us because I know Lois. Thank you. It's been, it's been a, 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 a real unloading 
a real relief to actually tell somebody because I haven't been able to talk to this. What, about this Mr. With Mr. X, you just hit on another thing. One of the re one of the uh, services that I provided for these men and women over the years handling their their public relations, their business, and their personal is they needed to speak to somebody, and I was that somebody. And by the way, there was one that you know lasted in a relationship, an extra marital relationship for several years, like five six years. And finally, when he got older, and it was just too much. He couldn't deal with this anymore. He went back to his wife. And I know for a fact that he fell so in love with his wife when he used to spend hours cursing her out to me that she was alive. He wanted her dead. He used to think about how he was going to take a bat in the middle of the night and hit her over the head. And it just mystified me the way when he decided it was over. And I think she knew what was going on. Uh, they had four kids. It was a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on, even though he made a fabulous living and they traveled and everything. When he Lois, decided Lois, it was Lois, over. Lois, Lois, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I gotta go. My wife is coming. My wife is coming. I have to leave. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Thank you very much. Wow. That was so, so, so Steve, I mean, that's, that's the message that we're going to tell people today because um, th this one guy went back and it was like 15 years of like this ma marriage. She used to call me up and say, she won't take, take her hands off of me. And I was thinking, you were gonna murder her seven years ago. I mean, it's crazy. All I could say, Steve, is these people are not to be envied. It's a miserable, miserable life. And I think we should also point out that because of all the anxiety, if you're ha in this situation and you need help, of course, you can turn to Lois. She's always there. You can turn to me. I'm not as helpful. But there are a bunch of 800 numbers you can call. There's a bunch of things on the web that you can go to. Uh, I wish I could put that up right now, but I can't. But the truth is that there are folks out there who can listen to you, will help you, and, and at least maybe help you get through this moment in time. Because it's, it, it's bad enough to be having an extramarital affair, but to be having it in the middle of this situation seems like an added pressure that is maybe more than some people can bear. You can see that Mr. X, you know, he it may just been a door slamming or a funny noise out there, but he had to go because he's living inside that little bubble and it hasn't escaped. So I think uh, there is help out there for folks. Uh, I, I can't, I, it's just so funny that, you know, Lois, you mentioned this little problem and then I see it and now we're able to do a podcast about it. It's really real. I'm surprised how many folks haven't, how many other media hasn't covered this. And speaking of covering important things, let me talk to you about our sponsor. We couldn't do Lying on the Beach without Handle. Handle is amazing. Uh, Lois has one there. She's going to do the demonstration. I'm going to see if I can showcase her. Uh, I don't you don't have to. You, you could show it because I think people are better off seeing it without the case so they understand that that is a kickstand. And Steve, you are the one. And I told this to Alan Hirsch, you were the one that said to me, the kickstand, because Handel, the company calls it a stick. And really it's a kickstand because, you know, you just put it in the slot and it, and it stands. And in today's world of watching videos, being on Zoom, FaceTime, YouTube, this is like, this product is probably one of the most innovative things you could have in your house. Absolutely. It's so great whether you're using it horizontally or vertically, the kickstand works both ways. Then when you're, when you're just holding the phone, it's just a really comfortable way to hold the phone. It kind of like, you know, gives her a little hands-free action there. It comes in a bunch of different colors. I've got two kind of grown-up colors here, a gray and sort of a, a, a carbon black. That's my red, my red, I have red. red there. I think there are at least 40 different shades that you can go through. You can find out about it if you go to Handle, which is H-A-N-D-L, NewYork.com, spell out New York, HandleNewYork.com. A lot of great website, easy operate, and the starting price is unbelievable. It starts at just $10. So you, you know, that's really nice. And again, you can attach this directly to the phone, or to the case you're already using. So keep that in mind, handle stick. So um, on and if anybody calls in and tells us they're breaking up with their girlfriend or boyfriend, no matter if it's the same sex or the opposite sex, we're gonna reward you with a free handle. I'm gonna sponsor that. Wow, okay, you heard that. You can 
end the relationship, I think she means the extramarital relationship. If you right. end the extramarital relationship, not the one you're, you're illegal in, she will give you right. a candlestick. So, you know, you can't beat that. And, and that's, where are you gonna find that kind of offer except on lying on the beach on camera? This is, this is the only place on the planet, on the internet, where you can get yourself a handlestick by breaking up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. And that's courtesy of that woman right next to me over there, Lois Whitman Hess. Thank you very much. So I think we're covered. Anything else we need to cover in this episode? Well, I just want to thank Mr. X. It was tough, tough how we, how we got him is unbelievable. I, I, you know, and it's amazing. And again, it's not a life to be envied. I don't care who's having what and how miserable you are at home. It's a complication. It's a disease that you do not need. And I think it's all being exacerbated with the anxiety of this moment, increases anxiety and that increases other problems. So I think that's part of what this is all about. And I think also only Lois could have found a Mr. X. So we talked about it like, well, who are we gonna interview? And then boom, she goes into her magic bag and pulls out Mr. X. Only Lois could pull that out. So Lois, I give you praise. Mr. X, thank you for sharing your story because I think a lot of folks are gonna wanna hear that. And I'm just surprised we're not hearing more stories about this problem, but maybe it will be the start of it. Who knows? Yep. Anyway, once again, I'm, this is a good time for us to sign off. Agreed? Yes, my husband's coming and I'm talking to a man on the phone, so I better get, oh my God, he's coming and he's naked. Oh my God. I know her husband. He's always naked, but that's another story for another podcast. So once again, I'm Steve Greenberg with... Lois Whitman Hess. And we have been... Lying on the beach on camera. L O B O C. Take care, everybody. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Stay safe. safe sex. <laughs> Bye.